The space race between United States of America and Soviet Russia, began not as a purely scientific endeavor, but as a result of a technological and political competition. In order to surpass the Russians, NASA was reshaped, and billions of dollars were poured in it. After a lot of effort in the billions of dollars, America successfully sent and backed the first human to the moon in 1969 through the Apollo program. After Apollo 11, several missions were sent to the moon to determine if the Soviets would catch up in the race, or not. During these missions, NASA focused more on scientific, and technological research, rather than just prestige missions. However, the efforts and missions were not created enthusiasm from the American public and the Senate, who believed that the moon race had been undeniably won. As a result, the broader utilization of technologies developed under the Apollo Applications Program, was cancelled. Interest in Apollo Program had waned so much, even funded missions were scrapped. Despite the setback for space exploration, this led to the creation of the Skylab space station, made from leftover parts already manufactured for the cancelled projects. Welcome to the Spaceship Earth. In this video, we will talk about America's first long-term space station project, Skylab, how came into existence, and what it achieved. The concept of a space station emerged in the 1930s. In the following years, many scientists explored the idea of manned stations, that could rotate with artificial gravity, or orbit freely, taking photographs of Earth. One of those who worked on such ideas was, Werner von Braun, who developed the Saturn V rockets for the Apollo program. His design of a rotating disc-shaped station, introduced in films with Walt Disney before NASA. Design underwent changes during the Apollo program. In 1964, NASA worked on a design that would convert the second stage of the Saturn V rocket into a space station after its primary mission. Using the fuel tank from the second stage, a large station with a 10 by 14 meters, or 33 to 46 feet interior volume was planned. The internal and external structures of the station would be assembled by astronauts, during following flights. While work on the station continued, budget cuts began affecting the Apollo Applications Program. Funds of the program was reduced to less than one-tenth of the originally requested amount. After 1969, the program was terminated. However, despite these cancellations, three Saturn V rockets produced for the cancelled Apollo 18 to 19 and 20 missions remained. Using these available systems, NASA tried to create the Space Station Project. This new project, named Skylab, designed as a smaller station that could be launched into orbit after being fully constructed on Earth. The new station would feature a large solar observatory, equipment for scientific research, and sleeping cabins, bathrooms, toilets, and a kitchen for the crew. Special gyroscopes installed to adjust the station's orientation. Similar ones still in use in the International Space Station. The momentum from the gyroscope rotations would ensure that the solar telescope and panels were always in optimal positions. The station's orbital control would be achieved using the engines on Apollo spacecraft that transported astronauts for missions. On May 14, 1973, the Finnish station was launched from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The crew intended to travel to the station one day after launch in a planned second mission. However, reality differed from the plans. Excessive vibrations during launch damaged one of the station's solar panels, a temperature regulation panel, and a meteor shield. The second solar panel could not fully deploy due to debris getting stuck in its mechanism. Although the station successfully entered orbit, its damage rendered it, unable to function properly. Without generating the necessary energy, it began a gradual decline. NASA not wanted to lose their first space station, and prepared in its first space repair and rescue mission in history. They developed a sunshade to prevent excessive heating, and determined the methods to repair the jammed solar panel, test them in a simulated environment. After the repair preparations were completed, the Skylab 2 mission arrived to the station and began repairs. First, they installed the sunshade to regulate the station's temperature. Subsequently, they performed a spacewalk to cut away the piece that was preventing the solar panel from fully opening. After successful repairs, the station began serving for long-duration stays and scientific research. First crew spent 28 days on the repaired station. After the repairs, they began conducting experiments and observations. The second crew, Skylab 3, spent 56 days, while the third crew, Skylab 4, completed an 84-day mission. With each mission, personnel stayed for longer periods, started to test, how living and working in space affected human body and psychology. They observed the effects of microgravity on the human body, view, the circulatory system. And experienced firsthand, how ordinary activities on Earth could be challenging in space. 
For example, they discovered that showers, designed for comfort and hygiene, were not as enjoyable as on Earth, due to the difficulty of managing water in microgravity. After initial attempts, the crew found that using damp towels was more efficient for personal hygiene. With personnel accustomed to station life, various experiments were conducted under a well-planned, but tight program. Over their mission durations, the three crews captured thousands of photos and videos of Earth and the Sun, making important observations about solar activity. Additionally, experiments were conducted for NASA's future space plans like plant growing and metal welding. During these intensive operations, the first-ever communication interruption, dubbed a mutiny or strike in space, occurred on December 30, 1973. The crew did not establish radio contact with NASA headquarters along a portion of their orbit. Later, they reported that they had forgotten to turn on the radio due to their busy schedule. After this incident, NASA adjusted the crew's workload to allow more rest and free time. Moreover, they became more sensitive to meeting the crew's needs for relaxation. While it was not an actual mutiny, this incident had a significant impact on improving the working conditions of space personnel. Despite reduced performance due to exhaustion from intense work, the Skylab 4 crew provided greater scientific and technical contributions than the previous crews. After accomplishing their tasks, they returned to Earth in early 1974. Skylab 5 mission had been planned to follow, but it turned out that Skylab 4 would mark the end of the Skylab missions. Due to budget constraints and NASA's changes its focus on the space shuttle program, the space station was put on the back of the list for a long period. Nevertheless, NASA officials weren't too concerned about this. They expected that the station would orbit until 1983, and before reaching the point of no return, a space shuttle could be ready to raise the station to a higher orbit. However, as attention shifted to the space shuttle, some scientists examined the data obtained from Skylab 2, and noticed an increase in solar activity. Consequently, they calculated that, due to the increased solar activity, the station would re-enter the atmosphere sooner than anticipated, around 1979. The expanding Earth's atmosphere, affected by increased solar activity, caused Skylab to descend faster than expected, and it entered the atmosphere. Unfortunately, the space shuttle that wasn't there to rescue it when Skylab hits the atmosphere. On July 11, 1979, Skylab re-entered the Earth's atmosphere and began to break apart. While the station start to burn and disintegrate, it was impossible for it to completely burn up. In an effort to prevent the station from falling on populated areas, NASA altered Skylab's entry trajectory to make it crash into the ocean off the southern coast of Africa. However, due to a 54-second error in calculations and interventions, the station ultimately crashed inland in southern Australia. Luckily, most of the debris fell away from populated areas, and many pieces were later collected by local residents. While the outcome wasn't as desired, Skylab was an important project accomplished with limited resources and budget. Until the Mir space station became operational, Skylab provided significant insights into how long-duration stays in space affected humans, and contributed to the study of solar activities. The information gathered, guided the development of future space stations that enabled astronauts to work more efficiently and healthily. Thank you for watching the Spaceship Earth. If you found our video helpful, please like and share it. Subscribe to our channel to not miss our videos about space and space technologies.